Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Jen Sends. Jen Sends is a series where I analyze all of my projects from the past month and I go over the attempts that I make that aren't successful and I compare them to my final attempt where I finally send the climb and I just pick apart what went wrong, what went right, just try and understand exactly what's happening when I'm climbing. This month I'm happy to bring you to outdoor sends. We're gonna go over some little beginner mistakes. The first climb that I'm gonna show you is called The Wave. It is in Red Rocks, Nevada. I did not do the V3 variation. I do believe that this variation that I did is a V2, although I'm not sure. You start off with a heel hook and then pull yourself mantle over. So in this first attempt, I start off strong, but I start to ignore my feet, which is a classic beginner move. I also start ignoring holds. I'm not that great at identifying what holds outside constitute good versus bad, and so I tend to ignore them. Everything looks the same, you know, it's just like rock. There are no bright colors, nothing neon or fluorescent, so I'm just like, I don't know what to grab. Here you can see that I can't generate any force because my leg is completely sideways, my left foot is dangling, and I'm doing like an upward dog yoga move. I need to move that leg a little bit further up if I'm going to generate any force. If I can't rescue myself from this position, I basically just roll off. So there went my flash attempt. My next try. I completely ignore that juicy bottom jug and then I just work a really kind of tight mantle that does not love me back. It's kind of a waste of energy on my left arm, even though the heel does look better than my last iteration. I feel like I almost had it and I was almost able to rotate myself up with a toe hook, but I'm ignoring a jug that's gonna help generate that movement. And right now, I just feel like it's kind of crunchy, and this might have worked, but it's a little energy inefficient since I'm not super strong to begin with. I need to do more dips. All right, let's talk about my third attempt. Here, I take on the holds, but I'm positioning my feet so poorly that I'm not able to pull down on it at all and my feet actually start to slip out of my shoes. I feel like I just couldn't secure that heel for the life of me, and I don't know whether it's because my shoes are ill-fitting, but I feel like I have these weird feet where I have like, this might be too high. I don't know if anyone else has run into this problem where you can't find a shoe that works with your foot shape. So let me know if that's a common thing. I don't really know how to go about finding a shoe that works for my feet. I don't even know if my feet are that weird or maybe I'm just, I need to size down. The constant struggle of a climber. Luckily for me, I was with my angel friend Jacqueline who let me borrow her shoes and her socks, which was really nice of her. Should I be saying this? Final try, I was getting a little emotional at this point. I was a little sleep deprived, but I had that fight in me. And so I'm being a little bit more methodical. I'm using every single jug that I can find. Grabbing the left and the top crack allows me to pull my body up enough where I have enough room to reposition my legs below me, which makes me feel a lot more stable, and it also lets my arms reach up for some finishing jugs that are pretty juicy. And the climb ain't over till it's over, and despite my shakiness and my eldest leg, I managed to top out of that spicy boy. That climb truly took a village. I had a lot of people giving me beta. Let's move on to Joshua Tree. This climb. I believe it is called Nightcrawler. Mountain Project has it at a V0 plus. I found it to be quite hard, quite technical. I say that it's technical because it's a traverse where you only use your feet. Well, you mostly only use your feet. At this point, you might be saying, no hand traverse outside. I would like to see that to believe it. So let's just roll in to the first attempt. So from this angle, it kind of looks like there's nothing there. And trust me, when I was on the rock, that's what I thought as well, since I'm not very seasoned, kind of a beginner. But the whole point is to find little crystals and dishes and micro features that are present enough to support your weight. I'm having a little bit of trouble here because I just don't trust my rubber at all and I'm not sure how exactly to push down. I found that the crux was actually the next move, which I maneuvered in kind of like a step through to what I thought was just like a sheer face, but what my lovely 
helper, cameraman boyfriend, was able to identify as a little dish that would definitely be able to support my full weight. So the name of the game of this climb is stabilizing your body, obviously very bouncy, and regarding your upper body position, making one or two steps at a time, reaching out, stabilizing before you make the next move, keeping your body centered, paying attention to where the center of gravity is. And something that I found really useful was even if you're on a slab with no clear handholds, smearing your hands is a really good way of stabilizing your body while your feet advance and make the next couple of moves. So I found that really useful. One thing that was key for me during this climb was actually palming my hand down, which allowed me to maneuver my other foot a little bit further. this point once you get a couple of feet going in front of each other it's kind of like learning how to roller skate once you just suffer through the first couple of awkward moves the rest becomes a lot easier and I was able to just kind of like walk around the rest of the climb granted the ledge kind of gets a little bit more positive as you go around and something that you might know if you are familiar with Joshua Tree is there used to be a cactus here I'm told, but it looks like someone uprooted the cactus, which is kind of like goes against all rules of leave no trace. Lastly, I think the climb is basically just walking around the boulder, but if you're feeling extra spicy, there is the option to top out, except I had no idea how to do that. And by the point, my legs were shaky, my legs were sore, and so I just decided to hop off. And so that felt like way harder than a V0 plus to me. Once I did this climb and learned how to trust my rubber, I was able to integrate that knowledge and apply it to a bunch of different climbs in the gym because there's so many climbs where you just need to know how to trust your feet because the rubber is usually a lot stickier than you think it is. Thank you for watching this outdoor themed Jen Sends. If you've stayed to the end of this episode, then I think we just need to like start our own hashtag, like end of the vid squad. I know that's kind of lame. As a little reward for sticking to the very end, I actually did film a vlog when I went to Red Rocks, but when I was looking back at the footage, I was like, there isn't really enough climbing in this for it to be worthwhile to post on my main channel, but I did edit a video anyway. It's unlisted, meaning it's not going to be public on my channel, but if you do peek in the description, I hid a little video for this secret video squad, and it's basically a little vlog. So I figured that if you stick to the end of this video, you're invested enough in me, you might find it interesting, you might find it cool, so definitely be sure to check it out. There is some climbing, not a lot though. Thank you so, so much for sticking to the very end. I really appreciate you. No Face appreciates you too. And leave a video idea or two in the comments. We'll see if I get around to it. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Later, friends. Center of gravity is, and Not forgetting to flush the toilet. Not forgetting to flush the toilet, which sounds like a torrential downpour.